Whiplash Car Crash. Everything about this is going to be about, uh, basically, every element of it. When I first created this idea of doing these audio recordings, let's just start it. Because this one's about being controlled and uncontrolling, and not controlling, and about being fulfilled and unfulfilled. I'm going to say it. In all this whole thing, I'm 25. I've never once tried to control a friendship and, and uh, basically be, be controlling. Uh, controlling and, uh, what was it? Controlled and the controlling will never be apart. Yeah. If you want to be controlled or if you want to control my feelings, if I trust you with my feelings and give you my feelings and say, you know, I love you, if you take away that trust by trying to be controlling, you're going to lose me. And I'll say it pretty simply, it's not in a bad way. It actually implies that there is no gravitas, meaning that I accept everything that you're into. You give me a chance and give me an opportunity rather than just one shot deal of, uh, let's listen to this song, see if you like it. No, that's not enough. You have to give me more than that. Your pleasure is your pleasure dome. It doesn't just place you in just listening to one song. Obviously, there's a reason and a sentiment for that purpose. It's just like with me. Most of the music I'm into now is based on an amount of years that I've you know, finagled and went through music. It doesn't just come out because I'm spurted it out for years. Some of them, yes. Some of the newer ones in St. Clown Posse and such, they've come out of everything that has occurred. They've, they're based on the experiences rather than the impact. But they are very impactful, too, because the impact of the experiences hits on target. So it creates a double whammy, meaning that they are that kind of special place in my heart. But that's not the point right here. The point right here is to look at the controlled and the, uh, the controlled and the controlling. Same thing that happened uh, yesterday when I was speaking to somebody. Uh, I'm not going to say the name because we all know what this is about. But to be honest, this is about a ton of different things. If you're controlling, and if you're trying to be controlling towards somebody that hasn't been controlling towards you, or if you're controlled, and you expect somebody that isn't controlling to control you, it's not going to work out. Basically, that's not expectation. Right there, that's creation of expectation, meaning that it's not already there, but it needs to be created. And it's the same thing with uh, being fulfilled or being unfulfilled. It all has to be said and not hidden. Because if you hide those things and if you sit down, not literally, but if you sit down literally in the relationship and say, well, the person I'm with is fulfilled, so I should stick with that. Because it's the same example that I have, is that if you try to just throw it in somebody's face, like, oh, you know, if you don't like this, then don't be with me. But if you haven't shown that, and if you've only shown it at that point in the relationship, what do you expect? You expect somebody not to respond to it. You expect people to just go for your every whim. That's not going to work out. It's just like me. I don't expect everybody to like every band, to want to work the way I work at the apartment, stuff like that. People don't want all that. They don't. But that's fine. You're going to see all my character. That's it. And to me, it, it, I like that everybody sees my character. Fuck that, you know? I don't need everybody else to see anything else but my character. You know, to imply that there's something more besides that? Good. Let there be something more. Let your own heaven and hell of my reputation that you're building be that, pro be that character. Because that's what it's going to create. You're going to just create the same problems because you're creating a reputation of somebody that you don't even want to spend time with. Character, 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 reputation, reputation, reputation. And this is what it all comes down to. This is what controlled and controlling comes down to. But if you haven't seen me be controlled or controlling for 25 years, it's not going to come out because of my grandma or because of my family, for example. Because what they did is they based their relationships off of things that they wanted a certain way. The first time my mom fell in love, it was about love. It wasn't about escape or security. Fuck that. But it was one-sided, which is fine. You know, it's acceptance at that point, which is good. I, same thing for me. The difference is I wouldn't go into the complete relationship then because I would know. I want to find out first if this is just one-sided. If it is, we can date, we can, do, we can figure it out, see what's going on. And it's not about learning to love at that point. It's about, well, it's one-sided. It isn't about learning to love then. And it's the same thing with most things, you know. I'd have to ask if somebody's thinking about me or somebody's talking about me, is it good or bad? You know, I'd like to know that. That's the most important part right there. Is it good or bad? Because is she gonna is she saying good things about me or is she saying bad things about me? You know, or is he saying good things about me or is he saying bad things about me? Because that's what it comes down to. 
it doesn't come down to all this other stuff that you could plunder in in the freaking desert or something, you know, because most of the same ideas that I'm talking about are the same ones I'm writing about. In my poetry, in my songs, in my uh, writings, everywhere, you know, everything that I write. My prose, my novels, everything. Everything that I'm writing and going through, all the books that I'm reading, uh, you know, that I try to spend time reading, all the stuff that I write, all the notes that I write, all the ideas I come through, they're based on con on the controlled and, con and the controlling. Because it has to do with that kind of effect. Does it matter if you're controlled or controlling? Well, it doesn't really. You just have to find somebody that's completely okay with that. Because it's it's the extremes. At that point, it's the extremes. Either I'm going to be controlled or I'm going to be controlling. That's that's the mindset, is that if you're somebody who's been controlled, you, you either want to control somebody else or you want to be controlled. You don't like the middle ground. You know, I like the middle ground. I'm sorry, you know. I can be plastered to blood on my skin, torn to billions of pieces, and I still like it. Because to me, it's not about getting the mess up and the blood all over me. It's about re people realizing that, okay, this guy really meant it when he said he doesn't like being controlled or controlling. And it has to be based on what the other person feels. It's the same thing that I've said thousands of times to a lot of people. I base my emotion, I base my gravitas and my idea of what I feel towards somebody based on my feelings and emotional sensitivities. It could be something very deep love, or it could be a friendship, it could be something that's been built. In any foundation, you can see that gravitas of my character. Now you can take it seriously, I could throw it into the dirt. You throw it into the dirt, you're not going to see me anymore. Not because, oh, I don't trust you now, but it's because it's already over. You know, you might be a Facebook friend of mine or something, and that's it. You know, I'm not putting down anybody who's on Facebook right now because I, have, I can't speak for them. I haven't been hanging out with them. And I'm not going to base it off of my experiences with text messages. I don't hate text messaging, but I don't like it that much. And when I did like it, I liked it a lot. But at the other point, it doesn't mean too much. That's the problem. To me, it's based on, well, you have to take initiative kind of attitude, which is what this comes down to. Control and controlling is taking initiative. A lot of people think so. Like, oh, this person's taking initiative to control me. He must love me. Or she must love me. Because she's trying to control me. Oh, there must be so much love here. Rather, it's intimidation sometimes, too. Because if you're not a controlling person, like myself, or controlled, you just look at it this way. This person is using intimidation on me when I never did. It's intimidation. It's like me going back to the past to somebody who's hurt me, or hurt somebody else that I've known, to, and tried to hurt me as well, and bury me. And me going, you know, I really liked your intimidation. Want to be my friend and do more of it? I mean, I just love the intimidation. You know, a big fan. You know, I love intimidation. Please, more. You know, party! Woo! You know, more intimidation. Yes, of course. Gotta love it. You know, intimidation. Woo! Let the party, let the party get started here. That's when the party ends. And it's the same thing with anything, you know. If you do something, you got to expect the end result. You know, you have to expect that on your own. Expectations only work on what you do, pretty much. Like me. I, expectations, they only work on me. Long drawn, long drawn and thin. Everything that I've done, it only affects me more. And it makes me think of my expectations for myself. Not for anybody else, you know. I have no expectations for anybody else because that's stupid. They're not me. I'm not going to take anything personally based on my feelings, and that's where a lot of people could say, well, he doesn't have any feelings, emotional sensitivities, because he's not taking anything personally that you're saying. Well, of course not. Why would I? Unless you want to be a part of my life so completely that you don't, that you want to see me in a personal way, then I will. But that's the whole point. That's when it ends, too, is because if you try to make something up that I didn't do, that I never said, or try to make it look like, hey, you're the one that first talked about this, when I didn't, then you're making me then you're making me the bad one because you can't stand being in that position anymore. Well, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I can't be controlled or controlling. I can't. I'm sorry, I'm not in the extremes. You know, and you know, a lot of people say, Well, you're not in the extremes, you're not living life. No, that's actually the problem. Those kind of extremes are not living life mostly. If you're controlled, how are you living life? If you're controlling, how are you living life? You know, when you spend the time being controlled, you're listening to somebody else. When you spend the time controlling, you're controlling somebody else. So if you spend your time doing either of those, how can you actually spend the time living your life? 
just curious, you know, that's it. That's it, you know? And it's the same thing with intimidation. That's what it comes from, you know? I want to intimidate this person to make them seem like they're inferior to me. You lose. Simply, you know? Sometimes you win. Hey, if you want to win a relationship that way, congratulations, you know? I wish you the best. But I'll be honest, I don't intimidate people. And if I do, it's not based on uh, me forcibly trying to intimidate them. You know, I would never, you know. If you want to talk about something, and if you don't want to, you lose interest in it, you better stop talking to me. Because if I'm talking about something and it interests me to talk about it with you, and you don't want to, ooh, you lost it. Because you don't want to deal with something face-to-face -face with somebody. You take the easy option out. Easiest thing to do for a lot of people, you know. I'm not going to deal with somebody face-to-face. -face. I'm going to send them a text message about it. That's what I'm going to do. There you go. You know, and that's what the controlled and the controlling comes from. The form of communication helps so much, doesn't it? I don't have to look at his face or at her face to do something. Damn. Voodoo, running from my magic. You know? And that's where this whole thing comes from. Is this whole idea of like, I'm better than this person, so I don't even need to deal with him face to face. He's not like me. Well then why are you interested in that person if he's not like you? Oh, they love that one, you know? And that's the truth. It's just like if somebody asks me, are you gay or something? And that, you know, in that tone of voice where it's like, they, you can already tell that they have already given that answer to themselves. You know, it's not even asking a question. At that point, it's, I just want to make sure that you are. You know, kind of, that's basically what you, you might as well say. And then I'd say, only toward you. You know, and that's it. You win. <laughs> But you win because you're trying to be offensive to me about something that's not offensive. If you're gay, you're gay. If you're straight, you're straight. If you're lesbian, you're lesbian. You can't, you can't make that offensive. If you want to make it offensive, I'm going to shove that offensive right up your ass. I'm going to show you what that means to ask that kind of question in that way. Now, if you ask in a nice way, like, hey, would you, you know, what, what, uh, what's your orientation? And then I would understand completely. Then it's like, oh, okay, they're, they're curious. It's different. But if you ask, are you gay or something? Especially adding that or something, ooh, ooh, they're already sponging up what you think. They're already sponging up what you don't, what they don't know about you. They're sponging up and creating a personality, creating that reputation for you. You lose. Reputation? Huh? You lose so completely, your eyes are turning into salad. You know, and that's where all the monkeys come from with Wizard of Oz. You know, you might as well be one of those monkeys that the wit that the the wicked witch is controlling. You know, or that be that little insect that she sent ahead, the jitterbug. You know, that didn't show up in the film. But that's the whole point. You might as well not even be in the film then. You know, be that part they cut out. But that's the whole point of this: is the control of the controlling. But that's the extreme lesson. You know, if somebody really cares about you, no matter how much somebody else intimidates them about you, they wouldn't do the same to you. They wouldn't. Because they would see that all that intimidation that's hurting them can only hurt your relationship with that person. So if they're going to use that intimidation tactic right on you too, when the other person's... Uh, you pretty much believe that other person that's telling you about the relationship that you're in. Because if you're going to use the same intimidation and not protect that person from those games that someone else is playing, then how can you truly care about that person? Well, I want to intimidate him too. Oh, well, you know, well, this guy intimidated me before. Hey, this is great. Woo! Now I got intimidation so close to home. Woo! Yeah, intimidation in the home. Party time. <laughs> and that's what it comes from. You know, no, no idealistic censor, you know? There's nothing I'm labeling here, you know? There's, n there's nothing in remote classic terms that I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the films that are coming out now. I'm not looking at how people pay attention to certain musics, certain ideas. I could care less. But once you build my reputation, oh my god, that curve goes down so fast you'd wonder, you'd wonder who's going to push the rock up the hill again. Because the rock's been, the, rock, the rock's already broken at the bottom of the hill. You're going to put it back together and push it back up the hill? You're going to be there a long go time. And it'll keep on coming back right back down if you keep on going down that slippery slope of reputation. Built ideas and structure. Because I'm still alive on this earth. You know, whether 
I don't like calling it a conspiracy. I like to call it uh, people living their revenge. Living their revenge. And not only living their revenge, but staying in their power. You know, you have to be corrupt, right? To stay in your power. Because you can't stay in your power if you're going to be honest. Woo! When did that ever happen? Well, you can. If everybody was honest. Because then... But you might get some leeway of spirit, so to speak, meaning that people will get behind you because you're telling the truth, you know, supposedly. You know, of course, you may not be at all, and you may be just the, 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 the persona they put in front of the camera to make it look like everybody's telling the truth and there is no corruption. It's all, it's all controlled and compartmentalized. When compartmentalization actually helps corruption even happen more because less and less people know about things. And this is what the control and controlling comes down to. Compartmentalization is just more control. It's not less controls. Less controls is less compartmentalization and everybody knowing about things when it's happening. Because they would need to. Now I'm not talking about secret things by the government, you know, the plans of a war, military tactics, such like that. I'm talking about business running. That's a little different. But then other people could take advantage of that in the market and stuff like that. Well, why don't we take away those forms of those kind of advantages because that's the problem. If you've created markets where the system can be corrupted, then those system, that system can be corrupted anyway. Because there's people in those, in those places of power that can, work in the mar that can go into the stock market too. So they're making double the cash pounds. They have to base it off of uh, their own initiative to put that money in because they don't know if it's going up and down. But how do we know they don't know? We know this. We are in their minds. We know what information they're, they're trolley to, that the ones, that, the information they get? Of course not. You're a piece of shit if you think that. If you think they don't know the information, they got, they got stock market books for the next 20 centuries. It's a joke in disguise, but it isn't a joke. So literally, we're saying, well, it's okay. Corruption won't die. So, I mean, we'll just take what we can. Well, of course, just like the exhibit song, Ignorance is Bliss. Let the bliss make, make us filthy rich. You know? And that's what it comes down to. Because that's the only thing you could get from ignorance. Is money. Well, I mean, if money counts that much to you, then take the ignorance. You know? Hey, I wouldn't deny you the, the ignorance. Because if you only want money in your whole life, or in that, in that tomb, in that, in that bubble of yours, then you might as well just take the money. You know? If you don't want to try to build out of that bubble... You might as well just take the money. Go ahead. You know, no point. No point in talking to you about anything else because if anything else matters to you, money wouldn't be the initiative to do something. It's just like most people go into, who go into different programs of school right now. They go into those programs based on money. I need, I need money, so I better go into nursing. I better go into all this other stuff. I mean, I'm not putting down all the nurses by saying that because I highly doubt that all the nurses feel that way. Actually, I feel that less nurses feel that way. But... People say the easiest option, well, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, no, no, those people wouldn't just go for money. Well, you know that? You're in their heads? Are you in their heads? Because a lot of people don't take the easy way out. That's not true. If people, if everybody took the easy way out, why would there be doctors? <laughs> because to be honest, I don't believe that, that that's, that shit is true. You know, I believe that people will do anything for money. Whether they have to take schooling forever. They want to get that, you know, and sometimes they're forced into school too. So there's a lot of different ways that it could happen. I believe a few here and there do want to do it to help people. But if they're ignorant to a lot of forms of what they're giving people, the prescriptions and the medicines and everything, then how do they know they're actually helping them? It just staves off the thing. It doesn't get rid of it, you know. When they could, when there's natural cures and natural remedies, when they, they could open up clinics for and maybe make a huge business of. Don't make the Kaiser Permanente, you know. But this is where the identity comes from, a controlled and controlling. is the idea of, well, I can know exactly what other people feel. And then you fail. So if you fail, how can you know exactly what people feel? Well, that was just one person. One person, huh? So one person, no, that's nothing compared to all the, ma the majority of people that you know exactly how they feel. That's them right there in the book. Thank the gods for that one. Because a lot of people still wouldn't believe you. They'd say, yeah, this person is just lying now. And probably wouldn't believe you later on. 
to me, that's your reputation. Is what is is how you your ego and your self esteem is built. If it's based off of what you what you intend, what you already have, and like you're saying, I'm better than that. I'm better than that person. You're not going to have much of a thing to live for in the end. But if you think humbly, like you know, I wish you the best. I want you to be happy in your life. I think it's time to move on. Then you're trying to at least stabilize their their life and not look at your own. Your own is going to be built on its own. It's not going to be built with that person because obviously that person is not stable in your life. Which means you have to say, I want you to be stable. And when you do that, you're saying, that person comes first. You come first. You're not happy with me if you have to tell me that we're over. You're not happy with me if you have to tell me, then why don't you break up with me? You're not happy with me if you have to use the same tactics that, that is, you, is being used on you by other people who intimidate your relationship or who intimidate your life. If you're just going to intimidate other people based on what other people have done to you, how can that be any better? How can that be any better for your life? What can it do to influence the decisions of your life? Nothing. Nothing. It can't. It's like a tortoise walking, going so slow while the hare rushes forward. The tortoise still wins. The tortoise still wins. The hare gets distracted. That's cool. You know, congratulations for the hare. You know, it, it got its distraction, but it lost. It lost. And it lost because it didn't have any other thing to, to gain from winning against the tortoise. Because all that mattered is that the hare is faster. It doesn't matter if it wins or not. It's the fact that it goes faster. That, that's the, all that matters. That's the only thing that matters. The tortoise being slow, ah, that doesn't matter. Slow, slow, you know. The tortoise being slow and winning, uh, well, the hare would just say, well, I'm still faster than him. I don't care if I won or not, though. Oh, well, then, why did you have this race with this person? And just to see. So then you just got distracted by something else. Of course. There are better things in life than worrying about winning or losing. Oh. So then why did you uh, challenge this, this tortoise? Because I felt like it. Wow. And that's it. No initiative, just a result. If you've already learned something, why do it again? That's pretty much the, the, the decisive method here. This is what it's all about. If you've already learned something, it's not about a cycle at that point. It's about you wanting to do something again and again. It's a different story. You're basically saying, well, I don't like doing things over and over again, but I like this. So I want to do it again. And that's where this comes from, the control and the controlling. When you're controlled, you have no basis of thought. Because your thought is based on what the other person is thinking about you. And it may not even be what you think. This is why I got out of a lot of friendships. Not because I, I forced myself out or I forced them to control me. No. They did that themselves. That's the one thing that, that's damn true. I never once made them get to that level. They did it themselves. They thought, well, I need to control this person. No, you're gone. If I want you to control me, I'll let you know. I'll say, uh, excuse me, can you control me? You know, or like I said, I'll go back to my friends who intimidated me before or other people that intimidated me before and say, you know, uh, can, can you be a friend? You know, I, I like your intimidation. You know, I want more of it. Please, and invite more of your intimidation in, please. I, I want a party intimidation. That's what I'm going to call it. Intimidation party. Intimidate all night and day, you know. But that's the joke is that if I really wanted that, I'd tell you. It's the same thing with somebody saying, with anybody saying like, I feel like a third wheel or something like that. You would know before you even thought about it. If, it, if, if, if you were in any way, any of these forms, you were, you were that kind of person, I'd tell you before you even thought of it. And you would know it in your face. If I would spend the time to tell you you're not and call you and talk to you about it or anything else. And you don't believe me? Well, that's not my fault. You don't believe me. That's something else. That's trust issues. That's not about being a third wheel or anything else. That's trust issues. You gotta walk down your road then because literally if you don't trust me, you better go. Because trust, no matter how much people say trust is earned, it's not about being earned. It's not like money. You either have it for somebody or you don't want it for somebody. But that's the whole point, isn't it? Because that's where the controlled and the controlling come from, too. 
it's not about jealousy, it's about trust issues. There's a big difference. Jealousy is a little different. Jealousy is based on panic and not having a grip in life and not having any happiness in life. Because if you don't have any happiness in life, how can you be... If you don't have any happiness in life, what else can you hold on to? Well, jealousy is the easiest thing to grab on to. Oh, you know, it's just like the old saying. Marrying the football instead of the person that actually loves you. You know, because the football, you can have a kid with, get married, stuff like that. There you go. Why not? You can do the same thing with the person you actually love. You're just afraid to. It's just like with, um, what was I saying? It's just like with one of the movies I have. But it's also with some of the music I have, too, like Death in June. One of their albums, it says, you know... I love the ocean, but I'm afraid of it too. Yeah, we're you know we're all a little afraid of, of the things we love, and we are. There's no denial there. I've been afraid many times, but not enough to intimidate the other person. Not en at least on that level of vocaling it or communicating it. If I intimidate people based on my personality, I can't help that. My character is there. You know, either you accept it, here I am completely, or you don't. You know, and it's not even about me being me. It's about the fact that, isn't that what you want? I mean, you met Marcello G Arturo Gignoli. You didn't meet, you know, some guy named Frank down the street. You met Marcello Arturo Gignoli. And I'm not saying that with ego. I'm saying that with true personality. That same thing as Frank down the street. I want him to be him, you know, and anybody else, you know. I mean, I can name everybody that I know, you know, or everybody. But that's the whole idea is that, if you wanted somebody to be controlled and controlling, that's what you're going to do. The first thought in your mind is, i got to control this person. Let me give him a little trust and then I'll grab for the snake bite. you lose that person very fast because you don't... Not only are you losing their trust, but you're losing trust in yourself. In that you could develop a relationship. To be honest, the one thing I can say is this. If you could last a day with me, you could last a lifetime with me. But if you try to change that, or if you've lied about that day you had with me, if inside on the inside, then you lose me. Because you didn't tell me that right away. You instead said, well, I'll make this person happy. Wow. But that doesn't help your life. The only, you know, the only reason I'd want to be with somebody is because they feel fulfilled with me. If they don't, bye-bye. You know, you don't need me around, you know, clearly. <laughs> You don't need me around at all. I mean, it is about being fulfilled or and, or unfulfilled or things like this because once you develop a relationship where you are fulfilled, and let's say the other person is too, then how can you intimidate them? You're not fulfilled if you have to intimidate somebody. At least in the same ways to where you would say, like, I need, I need to control you now. I mean, if I give you that trust, hey, I'm going to give you my feelings, and you try to control them. Well, hold on. Didn't I just? Didn't I give you those feelings for no expense whatsoever, no money? If I gave you them so completely, why would you throw it in my face like that and say I need to control you now? Without saying it, but with some action, with intimidation. I mean, that's the best one, you know? It's like me going back to, um, let's say Shane, you know? You know, Shane, um, this is one of my older friends. I go, Shane, you know, hey, um, let's be friends again. I liked how you made fun of all the rap music I was listening to. Yeah, I want to hear more of it. I want to be able to not speak about anything else, but only listen to you rant about it. Please, I, I love it, you know. I love just hearing you chatter on about it. Please, I want more. More intimidation, please. Because I want to be able to get out of the rap music because of only you. Correct, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But if intimidation is your only tactic, you're going to lose everybody. That's what this comes down to. Controlled, controlling, being fulfilled, unfulfilled, intimidation. All these things are built on the same wheels. So if you have the idea of being controlled in your mind, or being controlling, make sure the other person does too. Make sure the other people in your life do too. Whether they're friends, whether they're girlfriends, whether they're wives, sisters, uncles, uh... Stuffed animals, I don't know. Who, whatever or whoever they are, make sure they know. Directly. No intimidation. Directly. Right to their face. Say it. Don't waste your time in a text. Don't waste your time on a phone call. When you're in front of them, person to person, say, I like controlling people. Or say, I like being controlled. That's all. 
say, I want to fulfill you, and that's it. I don't want to be fulfilled. Oh, okay. There you go. Because I can't deal with being fulfilled. You know, some some people can. Some people can deal with being fulfilled. They like being that negative. I wouldn't say negative Nancy. I'd call it negative, uh... uh I don't know what I call it. <laughs> negative, because if you have negative thought, maybe you're in the long, wrong kind of relationships. I mean, that's what I think personally, is that a lot of people like being in that negative thought. And they like throwing in people's faces that they're in that negative thought. So it becomes easier for them, like to deal with it. Like, ha, huh, I threw it in your face and you can't deal with it. Which means I want to be myself, be this way even more. And then that's where you let yourself down because you start b developing a super ego based on something you probably aren't at all, and based on probably stuff that sh that you were you were treated as before. So instead of actually becoming yourself more, you become less yourself because you use your ego to sustain your actions instead of using your heart and mind to get the direction you want out of something. Because the direction you want may not be intimidation. It may be, you may think it is. And you may think, hey, you know what? I can intimidate somebody and get them to be with me the rest of my life. Uh, not necessarily. If you're a negative creep about it, you got the loss right there, you know. If you contradict yourself, you got the loss right there, you know. Because, hey, you know, I'm not putting down anybody in relationships and shit like that. But the one thing I'd say is I would never use escape to base a relationship off of. I wouldn't say, you know what, only reason I'm getting involved is to escape my family. Fuck that, you know. My grandma's always going to be the way she is, but she doesn't win. The thing is, she bases things off of her own experiences when she was growing up, which is fine. That's cool. But things done changed. And that's why this arousal of destiny, supposedly, is that, you know, a lot of people could talk about fate, for example. Like, oh, you think it's about fate? Eh. Fate does its own work. It's not going to be in me. No one's going to say, Marcello, you're my fate. And uh, there's been some people who have, stalker. But the thing is, right there and then, you can notice it's admiration. Too much fucking admiration. I'm sorry. If you admire me too much, oh my God, get out of here. I don't need you around because you won't accept me 100% for who I am. You'll look at me and go, I want to figure out more about this person. Well, spend the time. Spend the time with me on every single erratic equation that I'm in erratic life that I'm in. Because everybody is. So if you spend the time with me, maybe figure it out more and stop admiring and start start understanding and accepting. Which is different. You know, that's the real acceptance of somebody is not just admiring them, but accepting and understanding them. That's the real understanding of somebody. That's the real acceptance and foundation of what a person is. But if somebody kind of sidetracks it or tries to put it in a different position and says it'll still be the same, I'll ignore that other part. It doesn't always happen that way, you know, because it's not about the past even at that point. It's about what happened and how you left it. That's it, you know. To me, I left things sometimes and I know that I left them wrong. Other times, I mean, I don't know if I left it wrong, but there was no way to leave it right. <laughs> and that's what I've noticed, you know. There was no way to leave it right. Because there couldn't have been. Because there were too many doors that were still open. And there were also too many doors that were being controlled by somebody else. I mean, it's just like if somebody, like, let's say I have a group of friends, and I start connecting to one friend, right? But the real friend I had was over here, this other girl. And then I start talking to, to you know, she was, she was a friend that I met, and she introduced me to this group of friends. Then I start hanging out with one of them. Boom. Well, that person thinks, well, I introduced them. So I'm going to be in command of what happens between them. Bye. You know? You better not. Because I'm not telling you what relationships to get into or not. And then they shut up and they don't talk to me again. Because they want they want control of something. They gotta have control of something, you know? So it's just like with anybody who's controlled. They need to have control of something. They need to have something outside of that fucking control that's on, under the... That's, that's breathing down their neck. They can get rid of that. If you want that negativity around, don't push on anybody else. That's not gonna help your life. That's not gonna help anybody else in your life either. You know, if I push this negativity on somebody else, they'll like it. They'll be okay with it. No, not true. A lot of people, you know, their tusks are thick, but they ain't, they ain't going to let you cut them off to sell. Like they do with elephants. Uh-uh. They're going to say, you know what, these are my tusks. They aren't yours to, to sell because they're ivory. 
You get your own tusks. Why don't you grow your own? Oh shit, that's the best line. Because it's the intimidation method right there. But it's intimidation because you want to intimidate somebody to be controlling of them. But instead, this intimidation method is say, be yourself. Don't try to control me. You know, you could be yourself all you want, but get somebody that wants to be controlled. That's all I'd say. And that's the big step onion. Because you'll be crying all day from it. Like I did. You know, you can only cry so much, you know. But a lot of people think I don't, but man, they'd be surprised how much I cry. But it's cool, you know. It's not based on, you know, anybody else having to be there for me. Because someone who wants to be there for me wants to be there for me. It's not going to be because I cry or not. It's not going to be because I'm emotional or not. It's not going to be because of what they think about me and what reputation they're building of me. It's not going to be based on my character. It's going to be based on what they want. And their needs are solid, you know. Just like a, a little kid holding onto his mom's hand going to the first day of school. Or dad's. That, that really wrinkled stress of, oh my god, I have to hold onto his hand. I'm stressed for the first day of school. Every year. Call it what you like, but this is not stupidity. This is the controlling and the controlled. This is the fulfilled and unfulfilled. And you have to say all of it. You have to say all of it. This is why intimidation doesn't work. Because if you don't say something, give an answer to somebody else's non-intimidation then you're basically saying, I'm not settling for that. I want intimidation in my relationship. Find somebody who likes intimidation. That's all you got to do, you know? And it's pretty simple. There are a lot of people out there, sarcastic, cynics. You got the whole, char you got the whole barrage of characters to, to run away with. Don't worry, there's enough Tom and Jerry's around there. There's enough characters up the hilt that we've created. My whole life I've seen it. On TV, Pinky and the Brain, Animaniacs, woman to name every single cartoon gorgon that has created this idea that we must have this characterization in our lives. Death to it. I'm creating my own characters. I'm not using anybody else's. Death to them all. It's Pink Cloud unleashed. No characterization, no nothing. Because it's unfulfilled fulfillment. You have the idea to say it all and you don't. Because... <gasps> I'd rather be Pokemon. <gasps> I'd rather be Star Wars. <gasps> I'd rather be and then you keep going on and on. Like a laser guided like a laser guided satellite. <gasps> like everybody believing that there's no there's no corruption in government, everything's good, we're all good here. This is the intimidation method. You intimidate, you get everybody to quake under their feet. But you're not on every television station. You're only in my room. You're only over the phone. You're only in a text message. And you don't believe mine. So you use intimidation on me. I'm not going to think of you as a TV screen. I'm not going to think of you as a computer screen. I'm not going to think of you as all the research I do. All, all the time I spend doing research and finding articles. And real serious peer-reviewed stuff that shows evidence unlike yours. Where's your evidence that I wanted to break up? Nothing. Where's your evidence that you wanted to break up? Oh my god, it's up the hilt. I think the tower would stack higher than the Twin Towers did. On top of each other. So hide your own inflammation of not wanting to break up directly. But I don't intimidate anybody. If I do, it's only because I show my character 100%. You either accept it 100% or you walk down the door. Because all I want to see is that girl walking down the aisle. Now the honeymoon, beautiful. Take care, guys. No control the controlling. I want to be fulfilled, and I want the other person to be fulfilled with me. No intimidation. No reluctance. Just extra spirit and energy. Take care.